Good evening. Welcome to another edition of Pino's Pages. I'm your host, David Pino. Now, uh, just a quick editorial note. Uh, last night, I actually did film a review, but the problem was the file came out all corrupted, so I couldn't use it. Like, it was a pretty good review, too. It was about 10, 11 minutes or so, and, well, by the time I tried to upload it, it turned out to be corrupted and then thus useless. Yeah, as you all can tell, I don't really film on an actual video camera. I film through my cell phone, so, you know, you have to make do with what you got. If anyone wants to donate a video camera or a webcam to me, hey, I'm all, uh, bring it. <laughs> but otherwise, um, this will just have to do. So, without further ado, I want to introduce my read this week, and it is Steel Driving Man, John Henry, The Untold Story of an American Legend, written by Scott Reynolds Nelson. A little background information, Scott Reynolds Nelson is the University um, of Georgia Associate Professor of History and his speciality is mostly about railroads and uh, within the uh, American South, uh, particularly during the Civil War, Reconstruction, and then uh, thereafter. And he wrote this book in 2006, or published it rather, in 2006, and this book is about John Henry, an American folkloric legend. Now, Now, a little bit of background information on John Henry. John Henry, according to folklore, was the uh, was a railway worker, a railroad worker, and he was uh, famous for being the best uh, tunnel burrower, if you will, um, within his company. He was also a black man too, so this gives him a little bit of notability within American folkloric legend, which dates back to Paul Bunyan and the coyote and all sorts of other uh, legends. So, and one day, a uh, his bosses bought a steam driving machine, and uh, it was basically a steel hammer. So the steel hammer would basically burrow through the mountains at a much faster and more efficient pace than any of the human labors. Well, John wasn't buying it, so he challenged the machine to a competition, and whoever would uh, burrow faster and longer would actually stay and the other would go. So, uh, as legend goes, uh, he burrowed through the tunnel um, for about a day. Some legends put it at about a week or 12 hours or whatever, but he burrowed throughout an entire and extended period of time and uh, he was just better and faster than the machine. And he won the competition. There was just one problem. He died afterwards. Why? Because he's human. So he was too exhausted. He wanted a cool drink of water and then collapsed right there. And then they eventually buried him at a big white house, as they said. And um, depending on how the story goes, it either ends inspirationally, where the um, where John Henry, is, where the company, um, you know, gets rid of the machine and keeps all the railroad workers, thus giving them their pensions. Or, even more tragically, they just view John Henry as the exception to the rule, and uh, they, you know, replace everyone with steel machines anyway. So, um, that was essentially, so that has been a uh, folkloric legend since the 1870s, and it was first written down, actually, in 1909 by some folklorists who discovered it. And when I say discovered, I mean they finally found out about it and then they just decided to uh, transcribe it on down. Now, most folklorists uh, do believe that John Henry was either an amalgamation of several different railroad workers or that he was just a symbolic, uh, you know, strength of the railroad workers. But some have suggested that he was a real person. One of the people who did it first was a guy named Gus B. Johnson. And uh, he wrote about it in 1920 and suggested that John Henry was a railroad worker who was uh, who worked on the Big Ben Tunnel in Talcott, West Virginia. And uh, this, yeah, so wrote this in 1920. Now, Scott Reynolds Nelson in this book actually refutes that and says that the competition could not have taken place in 1920 primarily because, or not 1920, excuse me, could not have taken place in Talcott, West Virginia because of this particular thing. There were no steel driving machines in uh, that worked on the Big Ben Tunnel. So, instead, 
he suggests a new place, the Lewis Tunnel in West Virginia, which was about 40 miles be be you know, from uh, Talcott, West Virginia. It was near uh, Petersburg, I believe. And so um, one of the things is he uses, uh, he finds who John Henry was, or says, presents a possible John Henry. And this John Henry was not the heavily muscled, super tall, you know, dude in uh, legend, but a five foot one convicted uh, criminal, a convicted thief named John William Henry. And John William Henry was an inmate at the Virginia State Penitentiary. Now, a lot of his evidence is, you know, um, how can I say this, circumstantial to say the least. Um, and the reason that it is is because what he presents is there's this guy named John William Henry, and John William Henry was lended out to the CNO Railroad Company. And the CNO Railroad Company, as a form of convict leasing, because that was actually a form of labor. Because remember, the 13th Amendment, which was passed in 1865, while it abolished slavery, it didn't abolish, you know, man slavery in uh, cases of imprisonment, which is still the case today. And so as a result, a lot of people, including black men, would get arrested and then sent back onto a certain form of a plantation, mostly to do industrial labor. Now, I saw my review last week. I did a review about um, Eric Foner's uh, Reconstruction. And Reconstruction, essentially, long story short, it changes the way that the South was uh, in terms of industry, race, everything. Now, this, now that ties in well with this book because... Um, the competition, or rather John Henry's prison sentence and time of work was in 1870 and, eight, and 1873, which was around the same time the legend came about, but that was at the same time Reconstruction was happening. We remember? 1863 to 1877. So, um, railroad workers or railroad companies, you know, captains of industry, would come down to the South and... Uh, you know, improve the technological infrastructure because that was one of the South's main weaknesses. It was an it was an agrarian based economy, as opposed to an industrialized economy. And so, um, and that was you know, of course, one of the reasons why they lost the Civil War because they didn't have the railroad and railway uh, you know um, network that the North had in order to move supplies, men, and uh, all the alike. So, they were expanding these railroads and they use um, you know. Uh, a lot of you know paid labor usually low paid labor and including convicts and what they would do is of course you know they grab some convicts over or some convicts would volunteer and uh, essentially they could get time off or they could uh, do whatever um, yeah essentially get time off and you know shorten their sentence uh, by volunteering for uh, working and John William Henry, according to prison records, volunteered to work on a railroad. Or here's where this becomes a bit circumstantial. See, he doesn't actually provide um, that there was any indication that a competition between John William Henry took place uh, at the Lewis Tunnel. And, however, he does show that the prison records showing a John William Henry end at around 1873. There is no more mention of him. There's no mention of him being pardoned, paroled, or released. Now, of course, records were somewhat faulty back then, you know. A lot of people didn't have birth or death certificates or, you know, there was no such thing as social security, so you couldn't really track a person's movements um, back then. And so it wouldn't, it, but the thing is, if, if somebody died, it, it was rare for everybody to know that that person died. Whereas you can now check to see if somebody died or, and or is missing. So John William Henry, uh, any record ends after 1873 and the author assumes that he died around that time. And uh, probably because of us, you know, he was overworked to death, like the John Henry of legend. Ultimately, um, when you want to make, if you want to establish a verdict, um, a lot of his evidence is suggestive. I, it's not conclusive. Um, it does shed new light on the legend. Uh, it presents a possible suspect. I mean, there's like three different people who who have been suggested as being the John Henry. One, two within West Virginia, and then one in uh, Alabama, I believe. But overall, it's a little bit difficult to accept that, you know, um, without a smoking gun, which is very rare to find in history, by the way, but without, you know, conclusive, hard, concrete evidence, um, 
that John William Henry was John Henry, it, it's a little bit difficult to make to jump to that conclusion. So, um, overall, however, what you know is important is that John Henry, the legend, is still representative of what to a you know. Well, okay, hold on. Let's put it this way: he was representative of a labor force and of black people within Reconstruction South. And he turned into, a, he became a symbol for the Communist Party, you know, as a symbol of the working proletariat against the bourgeoisie um, during the 1930s. He became the uh, struggle against white supremacy um, within Jim Crow South, particularly during the Reconstruction Era. And uh, obviously, his legend has morphed into a bunch of different, you know, into a bunch of different uh, forms of medium and everything. He's been featured in a bunch of paintings. He's been in, um, he's been the inspiration behind uh, John Henry Irons, a character within DC Comics known as Steel, and who was introduced in the Death of Superman. They also had a SpongeBob episode where they parodied the John Henry concept, where SpongeBob fought against a Krabby Patty making machine and won. The only difference is he lived, uh, Squidward was still miserable, and Mr. Krabs is still cheap. There you go. But, um, so his legend uh, still uh, maintains a certain presence within the imagination, and it uh, will probably last for as long as his country does. So, regardless of whether or not they really ever find the real John Henry, or if there ever really was a John Henry, the point is, is that he represented the labor force and their exploitation by uh, powers that be. And particularly because working in uh, industries like railroad building, like coal mining, like, uh, you know, any sort of hazardous job, basically presented the possibility, the likely possibility of an early death whether through exhaustion, through uh, injury, or, you know, some other, uh, or an, an industrial accident. So, um, and that's ultimate, that's the ultimate tragedy of the character and the ultimate tragedy of what really happened uh, when the United States started building its infrastructure throughout the uh, Gilded Age and throughout uh, the Industrial Age. So, um, yeah, so this was, but overall, this was a pretty good read. Um, it, it may not convince, it, it might convince some of you that he found the real John Henry. It, it didn't really convince me that he did. It just presented another possibility that this might have been the guy to inspire the legend. Um, because as we all know, most folklore, most legends have some basis in fact, um, with the exception of those that are just complete myths, you know. Um, but... Overall, yeah, I mean, good book. Uh, I encourage y'all to pick it up. And uh, again, this is courtesy of the Sacramento Library. Support your local libraries wherever you might uh, go to. And um, that's that. So, next week, I am going to be doing my first special. Yeah, already three episodes in and I'm doing a special. And this special is going to be comparing two texts that I rented out about the Underground Railroad. Yes, so this will be a pretty long one, um, you know, and if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please, you can follow me on Twitter at David A. Pino, so simple, um, and then of course, there you can, uh, if you know me on Facebook, hit me up here, or hit me up on my YouTube channel, so, um, and then of course, you know, there's also my email, davidapino at gmail.com. See? Simple, you know, just my name. <laughs> so, uh, thank you for tuning in, and I will see you all next week. Take care.